Hello friends, I got two topics I'm going to talk about. I'd like it to be a discussion. One, positivity and how it's skewed. And two, anxiety from playing certain video games. Alright, I will talk about the positivity thing first. How is it how is it skewed in my opinion? Well popularity or media will have you have your little memes, you have your I know those are popular, I know that there's that there's commercials that'll talk about be positive. There's songs such as Don't Worry, Be Happy and there's, you know, being placated by things in life. Happiness. If you, if you think positive, things will go really well for you. And I don't, I don't have a qualm with that at all. Here's where I do. Let's say that there's popularity of something. Okay, okay. Let's say media has manipulated a product, marketing, and they've manipulated videos on YouTube, they've, they've used news to bring the jackass guys on to, I mean, on a, a news channel, a local news channel, they bring them on and then they will show that in all the, the different areas or whatever. You know, that now the, the minds, you know, there, there, there's a rhetoric at this point. It's, an, it's very important that something is drilled into people's heads or else you're not really going to have that rhetoric. You're not going to have, you know, signs and things that are repeated over and over and over again, it spreads into the minds. And then, so the same thing with what's positive and what's bad. And for someone such as myself, who can have apathy, it gets to be a bit of an issue. Because then, even for myself, if I'm not enjoying something or I'm not interested in something that's popular, and there's all these other people that are saying that it's awesome, and I'm, you know, I guess you could say it's I have experience in something, and then let's just say a video game, for an example. I've been playing video games ever since I was a little kid. I. I've played so many, so much of them, so many of them, that I kind of know quite a bit about them. So when a new game is coming out and it's, there's a lot of your rhetoric going around about it, and I basically know it's a piece of crap, I don't really have a voice in it because it's I'm I'm toppled by the popularity or the marketing. So you know I don't. It, who gives a shit what I have to say? You know, everyone else is all excited, so they'll go out and they'll spend seventy dollars, sixty dollars on this new game or a new movie or a new CD or whatever or book, and it really doesn't matter if you're positive or if you're negative. I mean, shit is shit, and that's all I have. That's that's subjective. That's and that's how there's this baseline in life where what is good what's real what's the cream and it's interesting that there's people that do real well and there's people that are i don't really have a word for it i'll just say that the people that are doing real well apparently know what's good they have taste they know 
where to get the good. They know how to cultivate the good. They know how to maintain the good, keep the good, and tell you what's good, which is actually shit, and then they profit from that. They make money from that. And then they tell you that positivity is what gets you what they have. And positivity is connected to their manipulation, if you catch my drift. I'm, I am making sense, I think. You know, families and partner, partners, maybe a spouse, will tell you to be positive. Be positive, be positive, whatever. Oh, that's, that's really negative, John, Mary. Well, first of all, if you think about it, that's manipulative. That it, there doesn't have to be a marketing campaign behind one person's tugging you their way, directing you their way to get what they want. You know, if a, a person can get on top of your head, they can get what they want. And this is a strong point where if I have my own opinion, and it's, as I've been told before, that you're kicking against the pricks. Well, it's one thing to have an opinion about something that you are not involved with. Yeah, who gives a shit? Now, let's say that you are involved with something, and you have an opinion and you're kicking against the pricks, then you're negative. You're a negative person. Well, that's the way you're going to be. That's the way it's going to come across to a culture or a, a cult or a, a hurting of specific people. In high school, you have your jocks, you have your skaters, you have your punk rockers, you have your, I don't even know what it is now, <laughs> your, your electronic hip people, your yuppies, whatever. This is a part of fitting in, is whether or not you're positive towards the, what's hip, what's trendy, what's cool, what's not. And I, you know, I, I, if you are going to roll along with positivity, and this is my, I think this is my point. This is a, a unconditional positive mindset where you, they say to you, you know, positivity always and never, ever negative, And you will go up and you will go up. And this is a lie. This is a lie in my opinion. If you don't look at the bad, and all you are, if you're trained to train yourself in a way, if you're trained to think that everything must be positive to excel, that's foolish. You've got to look at the, you've got to look at the bad. You've got to and if you're a moody person, you are doing this. I mean, with everything, with people, with products, with everything in life. And I think this is another reason why I isolate because I, I have my own opinion about a lot of things. And I refuse to fib over and over and over again. And basically lie to myself. Because you know a lot of that fibbing that you're doing just so you can get along with people is going to leech into your own mind. And your mind is not going to be your own. I mean, the more and more you're lying the more you're going to just go that way in your mind because it's just so easy. 
if I put up a wall and say, no, I'm, I don't, no, I don't dig that. I don't dig that and I don't dig that. And I have a reason why I don't dig any of those things. And it, it is up and over anything that's good about it. Then anyone could say, oh, that's, that's the depression and the apathy. And that is always a question in my mind. I still, you know, that's in a way that's what makes us special in a way is the different perspectives in different moods. It's not always going to be zany. It's not always going to be dragging yourself through mud to know what's good. Or on the zany days thinking, oh, everything is lovely. La, la, la. Oh, I love this song. I love this. I love that. And, hey, you know, it's how, how far can you go with really tasting things in life for what is actually really, really good to where you're having smoked oysters at your local grocery store all the way to being in San Francisco at an oyster bar eating $200 plate of fucking oysters with a little $3 bottle of Tabasco sauce. Kind of my point. You know, you can... Where's, where is it in your mind where you say to yourself that that's all you need is those sm smoked oysters and that little tin can from your grocery store where you're saying to yourself, yeah, these are, these are so delicious and they're so delicious. Well, you've never had the oysters in San Francisco. You've never, you, you've never had lobster from Maine fresh off the boat. You've never, so you wouldn't know. So you've already made up your mind that the, that can is all you need. Or you've had a, a, a bottle of some $14 whiskey well, you're being positive, so that $14 whiskey is all you ever need, and it's delicious, and it's great. It does you good. You've listened to marketing, and, and a lot of marketing will do that. A lot of marketing will, will tell you what's what. It'll tell you that this is who you are. This is your culture. This is what you like, and that's all you need. So if you've had a, a bottle of $14 whiskey for 20 years and then you go to having a 18 year 21 year scotch that's actually real good real you know the alcohols in it are real quality and everything else then you'll kind of get an idea of what I'm saying is where where there's a it's skewed positivity I, you know, I can convey in a million ways what I'm talking about. And I, I think when I bring up the actual products, I think that I might make a little more sense. You know, there's a reason why you can buy a certain item at the store for $6 less and it has chemicals put in it. And then I was just at the store and they, they are now they're putting bold, boldly on the seafood stuff. It, this has this, 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 and this in it, boldly on the front to let you know, this is what you're buying unless you pay the $8 more for the seafood that, ha that doesn't have any of this stuff in it. And there's a, a bullshit reason that it retains moisture or it does this or does that. Well, what, what about the one that's $20 or whatever? It's the same fucking thing. It just doesn't have the chemicals in it. And some people will know it and some people will not. Some people get it, some people will not. Well, if you're positive about everything, if you just, if you are appreciative of things and you're grateful and you're positive, then you'll just get the $14 one because it's good enough for your family and everything else. Well, you're feeding them chemicals. And that's your, that's your positive life. You're being positive and everything's good. Well, that's, 
there's a breaking point where it's no, and that's negative, where you say, get what I'm saying? So now, now you're moving up in life because you're negative. You're a piece of shit. You're negative. You're ungrateful, whatever. I'm going to get your, your pompous. I'm going to get the $20 shrimp because it doesn't have the chemicals in it. Well, that's the, obviously that's what you would want to do. And I, and I really wouldn't want to be directing in that situation. I'm just saying, if you are spending your, your dough on dog crap, the Hulu, Netflix, and blah, 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 and saying that you need to be humble and just get the $14 chemical shrimp, well, you're, you're feeding your kids chemicals. And then, you're, and then you're feeding them dog shit Netflix garbage. So where's positivity and negativity. So negativity is actually is what's going to take your ass up, in my opinion. And it's the positivity that's kind of, it's which keeps you dumb, keeps you stupid, keeps you in a, a level of, of small, small little human. Because you, you always have to consider that there's always, there's always someone to take another person. There's always... You know, P.T. Barnum. There's always, there's always someone to, someone born to take another. You know, some things, some things come across to me, to myself, as just a trap in life, and it's. It's so awesome to other people. And I have it in my mind where I already realize that, yeah, that's garbage. And there's millions of people that are indulging in garbage, that are eating garbage, that are... You know, in a lot of different ways, you know. So negativity and positivity is kind of just a bullshit fucking thing. A, a skewed thing as far as the, you know, the memes and the commercialism and the, if you think it, it will become, if you, if you're just positive, you will become, well, that's a directive thing that's conditioning and I've, I have thought quite a bit about how everything should be looked at from an entirely entirely different approach than from a x and y situation or a or a a herd a herded situation you know popularity or a and a, and a lot of this has to do with taste and i understand that it that also has to do with where you're at mentally, where you can go through thousands of things and say, okay, this is lovely, this is, isn't. Well, some people, they really don't have that ability. Or it takes too much energy to do that. So they are really just going to go to, they're going to look to the right or look to the left to find out what the next person is digging. And they'll just go to that. And thus the rhetoric and thus the how many years of culture that will multiply. Okay, so topic number two. The anxiety that I get from certain video games, I will just go straight into it. The Bloodborne, the, which I've gone all the way through a couple of times. Oh, the... Demon Souls, the the other one that came from it, one two three whatever, Nio. You you'll get where I'm going with this. When you when I am playing these games, I'll have so much anxiety. Three or four days afterwards, I can feel it in my arms. I can feel it in my legs. I mean, I could feel it in my entire body. It's that tenseness that you get when you get in those crunches 
when you're going on going up against the bosses or you get you have to repeatedly do something over and over and over again so that way you can win well i finally had to say all right enough is enough i had to box all those games and say to myself that i won't buy any more of them and so that really cuts out a large part of the games that are going to come out so Elden Rings, I think that's the name of Elden Rings, is coming out here in a week or so. And that's Dark Souls, that's Bloodborne. So I, I already know to cut that out that I'm not going to buy that. And also it has a lot of flashing, with dark moments, and then you use your magic or whatever and it flashes your eyes and gives you a headache and nausea and sleep issues. I don't want that, and I don't want the anxiety. So there's some buildup in these games that are recent, that are coming out, or have been coming to for the last couple of decades, that are not really good for my mental health, or my health, period. You know, I fucking hate this about video games because I love them so much. It's The more I play them, the more I realize that they're made to fuck you up. It's subjective. My opinion, they're made to fuck you up. It's interesting how Minecraft has a real ugly appearance. And you have more freedom in the game. Kind of. You know, you can make things, you can, you're not really having to fight anything. You just are interacting in this area. It's interesting how they make it really unpleasant to be in that area. And then the real beautiful games and the real, you know, the games that are attractive are full of anxiety. They're full of fighting. You've got to fight. You have to fight something. And you have to kill. You have to constantly have that anxiety where you have to roll around or you have to dodge or move. Now, if you have been playing video games since 1986 or whatever it was since I started playing them, then you'll realize that they've always had that in games. That tension. You know, if you go all the way back to NES and you've played a lot of the games where there was the timing and the Mega Mans and all that kind of stuff, that was high anxiety back in 1987, 86, whatever. It's always been there. There's, there's, al there's always this get you in type stuff with the Zelda and the Mario and it's there's a lot of subtle things in there there's not a lot of strobing there's not a lot of bright lights and then there's this bringing you up into wh where they want you to be and it's definitely showing today and not only that they've got you paying more for it so something that's sucking the life out of you they have you paying more for it they're wanting and they're putting more out for you to want that just garbage type stuff. So high anxiety. I'd say I could I can really speak for myself on that with Bloodborne because I played the hell out of that. And I remember when I first got that, I first got my taste of that kind of game. And this was maybe 2016. I was playing that, and I was maybe 20 minutes in, and I said, whoa, what is this? You know, of course, I was getting my ass kicked, of course, because it's something that I've got to really knuckle down into. I, not really something to enjoy. The dopamine rush that I'll get from taking one of those bosses or whatever was massive, of course. The thing is, though, to get to that, I had to go through a lot of tense situations where my muscles were getting real tense and my mind was getting real tense and I was taxed real badly 
on top of the flashing in the games and the light going through my fucking head and everything else that's turning me sideways. I think by the time I was maybe 38, 39, I realized, okay, hang on. This is what these games are doing to me. This is not good. So, I'm 41 now. I'd say it's pretty pathetic that it took me that long and that many hours of playing those kind of games to realize that those games were having an impact on living outside of playing video games. And I definitely could play Bloodborne, Bloodborne for three, four, or five hours at a time, which is it's insane. It's way too much. Most people definitely won't do that. So I, I would recommend to stop playing those games. They're very attractive, those games. Nio, Nio 2, look how beautiful that game is. The, also, too, the, the options that they're putting in Nio 2 where you can change your resolution, and your speeds. It's, it makes the game more attractive. Things that you're not going to get from other games. And I'm saying that these things are done intentionally. Why? That's for you to ask yourself. Look into it. I'm thinking of some other anxiety things from games that that are not really needing you to roll around you know fear type stuff i'll just jump out of that the video games i'll go into movies you know horror movies a lot of fear type stuff a lot of what's around the corner uh oh scares you know this is all stuff that's going to add to your the tension in your body which lasts for days, and I'm not talking about just playing the game during during the game or these movies where you say, "Oh, oh, I'm I'm all tense now." No, I'm saying this. Even if I put down the controller and I don't touch the game for two or three days, I still have that tension in my body. I still have that that anxiety, especially the the harder I push myself in that game. So that's a massive thing that I do not like about products or what's what's said to be entertainment. I don't really think it's really entertaining to have my nerves coming out of my freaking skin. And you know, if you have high anxiety, this is an issue. If you're smooth and calm as can be, then you are born with a nervous system that's not affected by these things. And play on. Enjoy them. If you if you have issues with anxiety to begin with, or depression, or any kind of mental health situation, then maybe consider this. So that's pretty much what I had on my mind for now. And sending my love out to everyone. I want the best for everyone. I want people to enjoy themselves. I want them to I want them to you know, especially moody people. I I really want for you to enjoy yourselves. I want you to enjoy life, of course. I want you to enjoy what is positive, truly, and understand negatively you know, shittily, what is shit in life? And I I have plenty more inside of my head to do in other videos that I'll do it another time. Come along, if you will. Anyways, let's look like uh, under 30 minutes. So, good night. Have yourself a wonderful time. Enjoy your video games.